Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. I want to give a special shout out to Toast, our primary technology partner for believing in the power of storytelling in hospitality for powering not just our barbecue restaurants, but over 80,000 restaurants with the digital hospitality tools that they need to succeed in life in the restaurant business and in the new creator economy. We learn through lessons and stories. Our job on this show is to bring the greatest storytellers onto the platform so that you can learn how to improve your storytelling. So eventually one day we're talking about your restaurant or restaurants. Uh, today we have Sarah Keir, who is the chief marketing officer for Condado Tacos. If you're not following Condado Tacos, this is the call to action. Follow them on Instagram, follow them on TikTok, follow them on Facebook. Basically go online and find out how they are spreading the message of the restaurants that they have. They have over 40 locations in eight states, and they plan on having a hundred restaurants by 2026. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Good to be here. So excited to have you. I'm going to start with our favorite random question, which is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? All right. Um, I'm going to go with stadium. So I would have to say the Cincinnati Bengals Stadium. So I, I grew up uh, with a dad who was a big Bengals fan. So I would always watch games with him, have great memories from that. And then I married a Bengals fan. So I still watch and I'm a big Joe Burrow fan. And then we actually have a Condado Tacos location at the Cincinnati Bengals right across from the Four Stadium. And some of the Cincinnati Bengals players um, dine with us. And, and that's always fun, too, to, to see pictures of them in, in, our, in our restaurant. So, yeah. Amazing. So we're going to rent out uh, the Bengals Stadium. We're going to talk to Entrepreneur, talk to Toast, talk to our brand partners, put on a hospitality TEDx-style content storytelling conference for people uh, that we like to say are playing the game within the game. You don't listen to a show like this unless you're somebody that understands that technology is changing rapidly, hospitality is changing rapidly. Uh, but I'm going to put you in the middle of the field and I'm going to give you this main stage and say, Sarah, sell us, sell us on Condado Tacos. Awesome. So um, I I'm Sarah Keir, reside in, in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm the chief marketing officer at Condado Tacos. Uh, I've been with the brand for two years, going on two years. And um, before that, my background uh, was agency side, specializing in digital marketing. And I love digital. I still do. Very, It's fascinating and ever-changing and always so exciting. Um, really love brand storytelling, too. And uh, before joining the Condado Tacos team, I was a, a personal fan of the brand. So it was one of my favorite places to go. And then when this opportunity came um, uh, available, I, I jumped at it and it was really a great decision since joining um, in less than two years ago, we've opened 20 new locations. So we open our 45th location in St. Louis next month. Um, and, you know, a little bit about Condado Tacos. So, uh, you know, we serve, um, think, uh, unorthodox tacos, so really craveable double-deckers, but with clean ingredients. And then we have a really strong dip game. So we make all of our quesos and guacs in-house, and then we have a full beverage offering. Um, we specialize in fresh margaritas, crafted cocktails. We are full service, but we operate very fast. So, you know, we have that flexibility. If you want to go out for a quick lunch, you can be in and out just as fast as fast casual. Um, but if you want to go, go hang out with your friends on our patio and share some margaritas, we're totally down for that too. So, you know, it's kind of this emerging category of dining that has been dubbed um, next gen casual, which is, you know, just that like, you know, customizable speed. Um, and I, I saw that Cali BBQ's tagline is slow food fast. Ah, you Love. saw, you did some digital did. digging. You did some digital digging on me. I like well, it. I'm like, you're going to get that point because it's like, <laughs> you know, the consumers want yes. what kind of change. It's that need for convenience. It's like, you know, people want to be able to grab something really fast, but they still care about eating clean food and good food. And so that is, you know, one element of the Condado brand that I think is really unique. Um, and then 
you know, another thing that is just, you know, a, a kind of a standout element is our atmosphere is just, it's, it's very unique. So every Condado location is, is hand painted floor to ceiling with um, murals by local artists, graffiti style. And uh, every, every Condado is filled with Easter eggs. So depending on the city you're in, there are just, you know, tags and, and little themes and, and, and stories into the, into the, the walls that really kind of like tell um, tales of that community which which is really fun so um so that's a little bit about uh about myself and and Condado well I can't let you continue on without addressing easter eggs because easter eggs is something that is definitely a game within the game explain the easter eggs and how do you decide what the easter eggs are and how does that go on to the overall brand mission and marketing mission yeah so um, we have an an art team um, at a, a full a full art team on the Condado side, and and that art team is really dedicated to planning out with local artists um, the 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 interiors of our stores and and what makes sense. So you know they're really what we have found works best because if you're local to a city, you know it best. So, you know, we, we find local artists and, and, and kind of create like a team there and identify what those, those themes that make sense for that city. And then other Easter eggs include, we have characters that you'll see across all of the Condado locations. So, you know, Ghost Peppers, Taco Man, Peasler, each of them kind of have a backstory too. So Peasler oftentimes is portrayed without any pants on with the, you know, the backstory of that is that he is just, you know, so hung hungry and craving tacos that he runs out without pants. Um, and he's just kind of this like crazy cat looking character. And then Joe Khan, who is um, Condado's founder, um, one of the artists was actually mad at him and um, painted him into the wall in a, in a way that was like, you know, he kind of looks like this skeleton character and Joe loved it and he, you know, embraced it. So now Joe is, is shown across all of the Condado locations um, as well. And, you know, related to how that, you know, reflects Condado's values, um, Condado, just from the top down, it's from, from the beginning, Joe, one of his passions has been about treating people really well, both inside the restaurant and guests. So he grew up, you know, um, has been working at restaurants since he graduated high school and, um, and he always just felt like a number and wanted to flip the script on that of just really, you know, wanting to create a place that not only would he want to eat out every day, but that he would want to go work there every day. And so um, just, you know, treating people with respect, you know, it's kind of commonplace now, but Condado never had dress codes. So, and we're very lenient with like, you know, uh, if you have, you know, colored hair or piercings or tattoos, like any of that was fine. And, you know, the, the kind of culture mantra is come as you are. So, you know, just welcome, welcoming individuality and creativity into Condado. And we're all about professional development. Um, so a lot of Condado's um, leadership is for people who were there from the beginning. So our chief operating officer who runs obviously all of our operations, he was the first person Joe hired as a bartender. Um, wow. But really there, you know, the, across the, the board at Condado, people who really have been there from the beginning, which is, you know, we're going on eight years now. It's just abnormal for people to stay at a restaurant that long. But if you, you know, if you give people the opportunity to grow and develop, um, that, you know, that's really helped with our retention and, and recruiting, which is very helpful when you're opening a bunch of restaurants. Huge news, Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego and the primary technology partner of so many of the guests that we have on this show have announced they are expanding their business offerings with Google. So now if you search on Google Maps and you sign up for Toast Tables or Toast Waitlist, you will have the opportunity to improve the digital hospitality experience of the guest, allow them to book through the maps into the Toast Reservation system. One of the biggest difficulties that restaurant guests have is when they search for your restaurant and they want a table, 
they do not have an easy solution to book a table or to get on a wait list. This is huge news for the restaurant industry, huge news for guests and huge news for you, the restaurant owner. Check out Toast Tables today and find out the new integrated solution that they have. This is something that we've wanted for a long time. How do you integrate reservations, wait lists into your point of sale? Toast has done it, check it out. I think when you are talking about the brand, I can hear the intentionality when you're talking about the things that you're doing on the local level in different markets. Um, from a marketing and branding perspective, this show, we always talk about, it's always bigger than a restaurant. Yep. You know, when I opened up my restaurant in 2008, it was never to open up one restaurant in Spring Valley, California, and to just make it. It was yep. always something bigger. And I'm so grateful of the opportunity that I have now to talk to seasoned executives like yourself, professional storytellers that are doing some of the coolest things for our industry to help other restaurants understand whether you're a single unit, whether you're multi-unit, whether you have 2000 locations, this stuff matters. This mm -hmm. stuff matters. And the more that you put that into the ethos, not just in real life, but now digitally, yep. the more that your brand can grow and it helps you solve all the problems that you're trying to solve, which is getting more customers to come in, retaining the customers, recruiting, getting yep. investors, whatever you're trying to do, but it has to start with the intentionality piece. Can you talk about intentionality at Condado Tacos? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, I think that our our leadership team, Joe, you know, uh, it, Joe and Johnny, like all of the the core group, they just have done such an incredible job of building a culture that is very genuine, and 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 um and and I think that has really allowed us to be successful at scale because you know it is not again it's kind of like that top down um uh of, of you know it's it's there it, our core values aren't just words they're really put into practice and um and so you know I think that it really starts with the leadership team and then it empowering all of you know all of the managers along the way to 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 really live out those core values and to live out the culture. Um, I, I think that it has, it has helped very much that we from the beginning have um, accepted people and encouraged people to be themselves and really accepted that in that individuality um, of, of everyone. So, you know, because it, it if you, if you feel comfortable um, at your workplace, you're more likely to stay. And and if you're happy, that trans you know that transfers and translates into how you serve guests. And so you know, I think there has just been um, you know, and I don't know that it was necessarily intentional from the beginning, but the you know the group of people who started Condado just did a really great job of of setting um, you know uh, like kind of ethical practices in place from the beginning, and that has just really allowed us to to be successful at scale. Um, and Chris Artinian, who is Condado's uh, uh, president and CEO, he, um, you know, is a, a, a tenured executive of, of lots of successful brands such as Morton Steakhouse, and um, and he actually had started as a busboy there and and became the CEO before he left. Wow. So he's a success story himself. Um, so, you know, and, and he actually found Condado, um, I identified Condado, he was on the private equity side and found Condado as, you know, a brand that he, he wanted to invest in. But then he was so blown away by this brand, by our brand and the business that he joined the, the wow. team full time. So, um, you know, it, I really do believe uh, that we, I know we are, we're creating something really, really special. Um, and the challenge, right, is it to your point is that brand storytelling, um, you know, so what we have, you know, organically done really well, um, you know, we're now entering all of these new markets where we don't have that brand equity that we have in a market that we've been in for, you know, five years, six years, um, and that word of mouth. Um, and so how, how we do that, how we tell the brand story, how we build that brand equity 
very fast in new markets, you know, that that's been kind of the, the big challenge um, for, for me on the marketing side, uh, which is a, you know, it's a fun challenge. It's an exciting challenge, um, but it is definitely a challenge. <laughs> Where do you find the courage to lean into a brand storytelling perspective on TikTok? And why don't more restaurants have the courage to post on TikTok? So, I mean, you know, TikTok is such an interesting one um, because it, it it has been somewhat prompt controversial from the beginning, right? Yeah. So, so I think I, you know, I think a lot of brands might have been a, you know, it's it also is a new digital you know, a new social platform like a playground, and, a new digital playground. Yes. And I, you know, I think that, um, it, there, there wasn't necessary. It was just, it was something new to learn and, and, and Facebook and Instagram and stuff have been around forever. And, you know, I think that that is one thing that we're, you know, kind of always challenging ourselves with is like listening, paying attention to our consumers, you know, really understanding our guests and, and meeting them where they are versus expecting them to, you know, log into Instagram to see what we're doing there. When in reality, if they're spending all their time on TikTok, you know, we can be engaging with them there. And, you know, it's really interesting and in, in kind of like probably the, the nerdy digital marketer in me, um, oh, you need to go that this is our this is our this is the language we're speaking here. Let's go digital, <laughs> digital marketing, get into it. This so, is an this is an internet show. We, we would we believe in 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 all all forms of storytelling, all but especially forms of nerdiness. Welcome. Yes, okay. please um, go. So when I started, I, I I mapped out with the team all of the the social platforms that we are on. And which year? What year was this? Give me a context. This would have been in 2021. Okay. This was when we had just we had a TikTok account and we were starting to post, but we 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 didn't really have a consistent content game there. Um, but I we we mapped out all of the the social channels that we are on today, and then really the the goal both organically and paid, right? You know, so across you know everything from Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, some Twitch, um, TikTok was there, and then we did organic Twitter. You guys, yeah. you guys yeah. are on Twitter too, yeah. Um, we did organic and paid, and then we really went across and like just created this rubrics of like, what do we believe that our consumers would want or expect from us in these different channels, right? And some of them are appropriate as a sales channel. Yep. Instagram and Facebook work very well, and that's the type of advertising that consumers want. Some of them are appropriate for brand awareness building or solely to entertain. That was the goal. Of, of TikTok and still is for us today. We do not, sales are not, a, you know, a, a box that is checked. Um, some of these channels need um, content or, or need community management. So consumers are asking questions. They're, they want feedback from us related to everything from products to ours to, and, and be having someone who can respond in comments um, it is, it was something that we needed. Some of them were great for social or for influencers. YouTube is another um, social channel that we're on. And, and, you know, it, the vlog, especially in the restaurant industry, right. It's like the vlogger, the, you know, informal food critics of the world, yeah. those people have a, a lot of a power in today's, you know, it, the way it works today. It's like that, that is kind of the new word of mouth. And so, you know, how do we get in front of those, those influencers who are in our markets and really what we have found successful and, you know, it was helpful coming from agency side, the brands who had the best influencer programs in place were doing it in house because it, in same I'm sorry, way, what did you say? Can you say that again? They were doing it in house versus yes. working with an agency to yeah. manage those influencer relationships mm -hmm. and and same with their organic social social. So paid social can be, you know, I think successfully managed by an agency. And yep. someone can prove me wrong. I'm sure this is different for brands, but again, no, just 
In we my, agree. We're in agreement. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the, the always on kind of nature of organic social and even that influencer, it's more like a relationship. And if, if, if they if feel like they really understand your brand um, and, and you can, you know, communicate with them in a way that helps them better understand your brand, we've just had more success that way versus, you know, it kind of going through uh, another, another party. So, um, you know, we give, I have, you know, we've staffed up a, a pretty intentional team um, in-house around content roles, social roles, um, uh, you know, video and, and, and photography needs. Um, and, and then we give, you know, I try to give my team a lot of, 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 of leeway to, yeah. to um, right. Yeah, to, to, to post um and, and uh, to post in, in content that is um engaging and, and and really laddering up to those goals that we have outlined. Yeah, I mean it's I love I'm happy that you've been talking about that because these are the things that the show was founded on is understanding that in this new creator economy, business creator economy, we're all creators. You know, yep. this is a show for entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are the original creators. <laughs> Pre-internet, they were creating things, creating businesses. And I just got back from the National Restaurant Association show in Chicago. And, you know, we're talking about 11 football fields of vendors, of brands, of selling products and services. And not a lot of content was getting created at those booths, yet lots of money was being spent. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we do this show and the reason why we talk to people like you is that you understand that empowering the people on the team, bringing these things in-house, having conversations like this, that's why you guys have 75,000 followers on Instagram. That's why you're building an engaging TikTok channel. That's why when you go to your website, it's engaging, you have stories. That's why you're getting all these press opportunities. These are the things that help you grow a brand when you're literally, it doesn't matter the size of your brand. Can you, can you tell me at what point for the Condado story or what point for anyone's story, does someone able to bring in a chief marketing officer? Because I know we have a lot of restaurant owners that they are the CEO, CMO, CFO, COO. And yeah. eventually as you scale, you can go, hey, I, I need to bring. And even once you get to that point, I mean, we work with companies that have thousands of employees. Even at that point, everyone needs to tell the story. Yeah. Everyone is in sales. Everyone is yeah. in marketing. Like it's all everyone's job. If this is the brand that you believe in, if you believe in the brand mission, you don't need permission to post on LinkedIn. You don't need permission to post on Instagram. You don't need permission to tell the things that you're excited to do in your work. Yes, a hundred percent. So, you know, I, I, I really think of, of my role as um, how I can empower everyone to, you know, to market, to talk about Condado in this, in a consistent way and to, um, for everyone to be a marketer. And, you know, I think that, um, when it, it, I think it probably really depends on the, your business and, um, and the size and scale and, uh, for when, you know, a chief marketing officer role necessarily makes sense. But if you're in fast growth mode, having someone who can be dedicated to these, you know, the, the plethora of opportunities that exist for brand storytelling and, um, and, and kind of wrangling and trying to align um, digital marketing with, you know, local store market, like everything that goes into it, um, having that dedicated person is very helpful. Um, but, you know, it really is like my job is working across all, you know, all of the departments. So, um, and working closely with all of our teams. We believe that the truth vibrates the fastest. And one of the most difficult things for brands to do is to get to the heart of the truth quickly. Yep. You're a taco joint with a margarita problem. Hmm. Yes. How do you lean in to that? And how do you make that truth vibrate through all of the things that you put out in real life and on the internet? You know, um, Sean, honestly, you know, we are, we're still evolving that, yeah. what that looks like. And I think, you know, to some degree, we um, are that brand identity and um, those, those differentiators 
uh, it, it's it's that story is still being told. You know, one of the the first things that I did when I started with Candado, um, it just made a lot of sense given our growth goals and where we we're at as a company to do consumer research. We we're kind of at that point. We had never done it before, um, and it and it is an investment, right? To to kind of take pause and do a research project where we did um, quantitative research, a consumer study to understand, you know, the Are these existing markets or markets that you're going into? We did both. Okay. So we did existing markets and then we did markets that we were entering in 2022. Okay. Um, and to, to uncover, a, you know, more about our consumers to really understand them, who they, who they are as people, how they make decisions, what they really loved about Condado. And then we did a qualitative um, research project coming out of that once we kind of had a target consumer, which our target consumer, we lovingly call the socializer. So, um, which is not, you know, surprising, but it, it is, you know, I think there were five total segments and the socializer um, equated to over half of our um, visits. Wow. So they really were, it was like someone who, once they heard about Condado, they were more likely to visit. Once they visited, they were more likely to become a loyal, like a loyal, you know, um, fan, uh, a consumer. So, um, and then we sat down with these consumers, both people who were already loyal fans of Condado and people who were essentially a, a socializer, but who weren't, and talked to them about their dining preferences, what they loved about Condado, um, really to inform that, you know, that storytelling. Of, so, so that we can start kind of marketing these messages in, in new markets, you know, attention spans are so short. Right. Like, Very short. <laughs> we're talking, you know, we're working on video projects and stuff now. Three seconds, 1.5 seconds. Yes. Where it's like <laughs> how, and, and especially, I mean, you'll get this too, right? Like uh, how do you convey everything that you want to convey about the brand or the thing that is the most important to know um, to the consumer very quickly so that they, you know, want six to- Six words. Uh, You've got it down to six words. It's very impressive. Like so taco um, joint with the margarita problem. That's very <laughs> impressive. Thank you. I see a lot of bad marketing copy out there. A lot <laughs> of bad marketing copy. So you guys have done a great job. Can you tell me about the swag? We we believe in ABB, always be branding and leaning into your crazy, leaning into the ethos of who you are, your uniqueness, um, not just as an individual, but especially as a brand. It's very hard to do uh, for a single unit restaurant, but it's even harder to do as you grow and scale. Um, tell me about tell me about the swag and the merch. Yeah, so the the swag and merch, um, the the t shirt I'm wearing today is designed by one of our local artists. So, you cool. know, we we commissioned um, uh, this artist. His name is Elliot Shaltree. He's out of Grand Rapids, and we we love Elliot. Um, but we we commissioned him to do a design for our we called it like a band tour, um, uh, the Condado U.S. tour T-shirts. So this was celebrating our 2021 locations, um, and then so that that's actually Peasler, the character this, that nice. who's like one of our reoccurring characters, uh, and then on the back has all of the locations that we that we entered. Um, retail is actually one of the areas that is on my wish list to to essentially make that available for consumers. That was one thing that we heard from our guests. They're like, wow. we love your shirts. Mm -hmm. We only get them sometimes. We don't have a way for people to purchase, you know, retail from us today. Um, but building that out um, is is a goal <laughs> for sure. us because um, it is it's fun. They're all very, you know, the 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 shirt designs and retail that we do have highly, you know, um, creative, artistic, unique, um, and, and, you know, kind of celebrating uh, a, a variety of different things about, about Kindado. So, yeah. How do you incorporate technology into your marketing and brand initiatives? Yeah. So, you know, um, what we have found with technology or what has like worked best with technology is really those, those, um, those areas that can improve the guest experience. So how can we make this more convenient for the guest? And, and whether that be um, the, you know, toast handhelds at the servers, you know, like getting the orders. Are you guys them. toast customers? Yep, we are. Really? Yes. I'm bad at my research. That's amazing. Uh, you Have you always been on toast? 
I don't know if we always have, but okay. we have since I have been with Kendago. Yes. Look at that. There you go. That's that's why we that's why we do the show we do. Yeah. All the best brands and all the best brands, they make it easy for us. The, so yes, we, can, and we can take care of our guests and uh work work on selling more shirts and all kinds of other stuff that'll that'll bring more revenue and make us more profitable and sustainable. A hundred percent. So one it like just those those elements of of technology that improve that make it more convenient for the guest and you always want to walk that line of not confusing the guest right yeah. so we're 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 always kind of looking at um you know new technologies ordering kiosks at the table or you know um if 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 what what makes sense and and trying to to test it in a way that you know um, we're just being very thoughtful of making sure that it makes sense. One area that we have had a lot of success with related to technology is in back of house automation cool. and starting to incorporate more of that into our kitchens that are, you know, we're already, we're all about speed and efficiency and consistency. So, you know, where and how we can do that. Um, uh, we've had success and, and, and I think that will probably be an area that we do more of in back of house. Um, and then, you know, we have our, we've launched a loyalty program. Um, uh, we use punch, uh, okay. cool. punch for that. And that has been another area. We actually just had an app update go live today where nice. we launched challenges where we can, you know, kind of set specific objectives of, you know, eat Condado three times this week and, you know, unlock 30 points type of like, you know, um, frequency related challenges. Um, but yeah, so I, I definitely say related to like, how can we improve guest experience related to convenience um, and then just make, you know, things more fun, gamifying where and how we can. Um, those are a couple areas that technology, I think, will will continue to play a big role. I would love to hear how you think about the difference of marketing on-prem, off-prem and catering. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, it's so interesting because COVID kind of changed a lot of, I mean, a lot, right, obviously, <laughs> but um, kind of overnight, um, our business was, went from, we we fortunately had an off, off-prem um, uh, business before COVID happened, but it was a very small portion of our business, especially being full service. And then kind of overnight, it became the really the only way for a period of time that guests could eat at, you know, eat Kandata was, was off-prem. Um, so the speed aspect of our brand was incredibly helpful because again, we could kind of operate pretty much like as fast as fast casual. And, um, so, you know, the, the way that, um, we think about marketing around these things is, is, is really just being thoughtful of what messaging makes sense. So kind of like ideal, um, ideal consumer journey with Kendato is ideally we get them in the door the first time so that they can experience, you know, the whole, the atmosphere and, and that, you know, kind of like you, you, unique element of, of dining in, um, at, at Kendato, right? So I, ideally they're, they're visiting us in person for the first time. And then they also realize that we are very fast and that they can get this really craveable clean food at home. Um, and so from a touch point perspective, that is kind of the flow of it. We are trying to, you know, incorporate like, you know, most of our, our initial brand awareness efforts are around dine-in yep. and then we are retargeting and using lists and using things like, you know, um, we actually just are testing uh, in our Nashville locations right now, a couple in-store elements related to we're launching, you know, kind of this, a sub logoed Condado Go that really indicates just like the speed um, around our to-go offering. We're actually testing Toast has new ordering screens. Have you ever been, Wait, I don't know, uh, Crumble Cookies. Yep. Okay. Where they yep. have the ordering screens where it's like in progress and order ready. It's amazing. Yeah. They've rolled yes. those out. Yeah. Yes. So we're testing one of those just to, you know, help guests realize how fast, like make it easier yeah. for people picking up their food and help, help, um, kind of highlight how fast we, we can be with off prem and, and catering has been such an interesting line of business for us. We just launched catering a few years ago and it has really just exploded. Um, and you know, that, 
<laughs> our thought there is just that there is not not as many more people but not still not as many are yep. offering catering so if you yep. have a catering offering that is really good food um and and we try to be thoughtful about that experience we did a setup video that has a qr code on the back of our boxes we just redesigned our boxes using like you know all original art so they're nice and bright and vibrant yep. um but and then we have you know hacks videos on the front where people could it. yeah just like you know it's mix case are those public are those published on the internet or are they published are they where are they hosted those hack videos um, our website awesome so, cool. yep, mm -hmm. sweet yeah so That's really cool. uh, so all of you know we kind of thought that especially with the return to office you know a lot of companies are still trying to figure that out um that catering might not grow as fast as we originally had thought but that really hasn't been our experience we we have had a, a, a lot of success with catering and it is you know it's it is the same audience but really like you know kind of like the best ways to engage with them a lot of field sales and food drops and um you know we if getting in with with universities some of our you know biggest catering customers are athletic departments at osu and in you know michigan and um uh so because it's really great food but it's also clean yep. so people you know the te teams feel good about about eating that so um yeah i love it i love it so every single wednesday and friday on the social audio app clubhouse uh, we host a room called Digital Hospitality. That's a chance for you, the listener, the viewer, anybody that's following this content to come on stage to participate. It's great to passively listen to a podcast or to watch a YouTube video or to see the clip on Instagram, but we actually want to hear your voice. If you're in sales, if you're in marketing, if you're a content creator, if you're in the hospitality space, uh, this is the, the playground that we hold for you. Uh, we do a social shout out for those people that are, my grandfather taught me to stay curious, to get involved and to ask for help. Mm -hmm. uh, curious people always want to level up. They read books, they listen to shows, um, they put themselves in the position to, to be better, but then you actually have to do something about it. You have to raise your hand, you have to get on stage, you have to do the work. Um, and then finally, you have to ask for help. Uh, one of the hardest lessons that I learned. But this week's shout out goes to our friend Dean LeBay. Dean LeBay has been joining us on Clubhouse for the last two years. Um, he is a 62-year-old uh, that is recovering from a disability, but he shows up every single week. He loves hospitality. He loves the digital aspect. He wants to help independent restaurant owners, but he wanted to go to the Restaurant Association show in Chicago. He asked for help, and within 12 hours, the community had raised over $2,000 to get him to Chicago. We saw him in Chicago. He had a blast. Dean, this is a shout out to you. Um, I wanted to give you a chance, Sarah. I know it's on entrepreneur and I know it's easy to say you want to shout out your entire team, but I need one person on the marketing team, on the brand team that's gone above and beyond. Um, who's a shout out for? I have to give my shout out to Evan Perdue, who um, manages both our loyalty program and customer experience. So, you know, I Evan gets my shout out because awesome. he, he really does regularly go up, above and beyond. So um, and and we appreciate you, Evan. I love it. So now we're going to give you the smartphone storytelling thesis. So this is where I get to ask my guests about your smartphone usage. Uh, are you an iPhone or Android user? iPhone. And how, what version? Oh, I, I think that I have the 14, not the new one. Okay, not the new one. Uh, do you prefer Apple Music or Spotify or Pandora? Spotify. Spotify. Uh, email or Slack? Email. I used to, in agency, it was Slack. Agency all day, Slack. But now, yes. Now it's rest, restaurant. It's email. And texting. Yeah. Yes, it's texting and email. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, that, that leads me to my next question. Can you get restaurant people to respond to email? Or do they respond to text better? Oh, definitely text better. So, yep. <laughs> yes. Text, text or phone call? Yes. Text or phone call? Which one do they prefer? Or which one do you prefer? Text or phone call? It depends on what it is. So I prefer text, but sometimes it, a phone call is just so easy. much faster. Yep. Yep. Uh, LinkedIn or Instagram? In, 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 for me personally. Instagram, yeah. <laughs> Instagram or TikTok? TikTok. What's your favorite app? Oh, man. I, if we went by hours uh, <laughs> yes. spent on it, it would be TikTok. <laughs> how, many, how many hours per day are you on your smartphone? 
I think that my last report said around five okay. hours per day. Five hours per day. And uh, do you have, do you take more photos or more videos? That is probably very even split, probably maybe slightly more photos still. More photos still. Uh, what is your least favorite notification? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, my least favorite notification. Um, Do you live I, notifications on or notifications off? I mostly have them off. <laughs> so um, I, I, you know, if, if I, I, I can't think of a notification that I don't like offhand. Okay. Um, and what is a cool app that you use that you don't think most people know about? Ooh, um, let's see. Hmm. Um, that people wouldn't know about. I'm going to cheat and that's fine. And just see if there's anything. Um, I again am not sure. Well, I mean, this one's not new. It's like, but and well. Do I, yeah, I'll just use it. Are you on Be Real? Uh, Be Real. Yeah, I was. I was on Be Real. I tried it out. So, yeah. Yes. So, so I it have, have, I'm on Be Real and just really I've, I've enjoy that app and enjoy connecting with people in my yeah. network that way. I just feel like they have done a really good job of, of, you know, kind of like the not, like the, the not social network. Non-social. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so, so yeah, if you haven't checked that one out yet, check it out. And all of my friends are going to make fun of me for saying that one. Or like, stop <laughs> that's, trying that's to make even me happen. That's even better. That's fantastic. Um, well, if you guys want to connect with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I am weirdly available on all social platforms. I want to hear about your story. I want to hear about your restaurant. And uh, don't be surprised if I make you start making videos and posting them. Um, because no one's coming to tell your story. That's why we started this show. Uh, Sarah, where can people connect with you and where can they connect with Condado? We're going to put links into the article so that they can follow you guys on social and uh, go to the website. But where where can people follow you guys? So all of the major social um, platforms that that we talked about. So, you know, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn is great for you know, business news. Um, and then for, for me personally, LinkedIn would be the best place to, to follow me too. That's awesome. And any parting words of wisdom for the uh, restaurant marketing executive or entrepreneur that is going to listen to this show? You know, I, um, the, the keep it simple, stupid thing. I, I tell myself that all of the time um, because it can just get so complicated with all of the channels or feel complicated. And at the end of the day, it is a, a story that you are trying to tell and um, connect with your consumers in a personal way. So, um, you know, just as best as you can, try not to, to overcomplicate things. I love it. Yeah. Don't overthink it. It's just audio, video, words, and images. That's all, that's all the internet is. We, you're already doing it in real life. Just publish it on the internet. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Condado Tacos, check them out and uh, we will catch you guys all next week. Thanks for listening to the show. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. The best way that you can help us with the show is to subscribe and write a review. We love the opportunity to connect with you no matter where you are on the globe, no matter what restaurant you are running. Please send us a DM on social at Sean P. Walchef. If you are interested in toast, if you want to improve your digital hospitality, please send me a DM. I will get you in touch with a local toast representative. We appreciate you listening to this show. The best way that you can help this show is share it with a friend and we will catch you all next week or we will see you on one of the digital playgrounds that we call social media.